What's up guys, welcome to part 4 of our Japanese Lantern tutorial. In this part we are going to go into Substance Painter and texture up our model. So in the previous parts we created our low poly and then our high poly in ZBrush and we've exported it out. And this will be the final part, getting it ready to put into our game engine. So let's flip over to our software view and we will get started. So here's actually one I prepared earlier, just to get an idea of what the final thing would look like. So we've got these kind of stone tiles on the roof, uh, a painted uh, wooden um, pillar and lantern. So we're going for a, uh, a wooden beam with a red paint on it and the paint's kind of flecking off a wee bit. And this kind of metallic little um, sort of decorative ring binder around it. And then just a stone base. And you can see on the stone base there we've got those little bits of... Uh, little chips and chunks taken out that we got in the high poly or little um, cracks and things like that. So let's see, I'll just clear that. How we're going to start this, we're going to go to File and New. And we're going to leave this as PBR Metallic Roughness. We're going to change Document Resolution to 2048. I'm going to set our file up to uh, our Lantern Low Poly, the Low Poly FBX. Now we've got a lot of files here, but I'll explain what they all are. Lantern Low Poly FBX. And this is going to be our in-game model. i just hit OK. Uh, do you want to see this one? No, just discard that one. That's fine. And here is our base model, as you can see. And here is our UV map. Now, I've done enough Substance Painter tutorials that you should know the controls and stuff already, but I'm just zooming in and out with the mouse wheel. Alt uh, and mid click to pan around, Alt and left click to rotate around. Uh, another really good one to know is Shift and right click to rotate the actual lighting around this. Whatever environment you've chosen your render settings, you can actually rotate it around. Um, okay, so. First thing we want to do, I might fly through this quite quickly again. I'm assuming you're going to have watched a few of my tutorials already, my sort of my simpler tutorials. But we're going to go over to texture set settings. Uh, this is going to be set 2048 by 2048. You can see our different channels that we have here. Base, height, roughness, etc. And we're going to back in our mesh maps. Uh, we're going to set this to 2048 again. Uh, what we want to do is we want to take those high poly meshes that we made in ZBrush and apply them to this low poly mesh. So we're going to click here. And uh, if you'll remember, ZBrush being a bit of a funny program like it always is, it won't let us just output one solid uh, single high poly mesh. So instead what we did was we exported each subtool in turn in its high poly uh, OBJ file. So what we have to do is take this one right through to this one uh, select them all with the shift key and then just hit open and what we can do is we can leave the max frontal and max rear distance just as they are we don't need to touch anything else and just hit back default mesh maps now when i click this because we're using so many different subtools it's going to take quite a while so i'm going to pause the video here and we'll come back just as uh, it's loaded up So there we go, that took about three minutes there. And you can see already a lot of the detail has been applied. We've got these wee vertical uh, strokes and things, and we've got all the uh, little divots and chips and cracks on the base. We've also got all this lovely high poly detail up on the, the roof here, and you can see that's still a completely flat plane, but look how nice that looks. And if we shift and right click we can rotate the light around that and see how those shadows change on the tiles absolutely lovely there so that gives us a lot of detail even though we are completely flat so okay let's start painting this guy uh texture set settings we're done with that now uh the only well actually the only other thing we want to do this is a lantern we want this to glow so it's not going to be transparent, we're not going to see a bulb or anything, it's just going to be a kind of a, a nice yellowy warm glow coming out. So what we need to do is add an emissive channel to this. So how we're doing that, we'll go over here to channels and our texture set settings, hit the little plus icon, uh, and you can see the channels we already have, uh, the default that we have for the PBR material that we made at the start, but we can't add to that and we can add all of these different channels. 
and all we want is emissive I'm going to add that and uh, if we look down here in our properties panel you'll see now that we had these uh, the five default ones color height roughness etc and now we have emissive so we can toggle that on and off for any layer that we want and remember that just like Photoshop layers we are painting this material on our layers but we don't need to paint every one of these on every layer we can just focus on color we can focus on the metallic we just focus on the emissive etc so because we're already quite familiar with substance painter at this point I might not go in detail on everything I'm doing um, I might just show you a few things work it up pause the video etc and keep going but uh, a few little things we'll go over to the layers tab now I'm actually going to just to keep this organized I'm going to create a few folders and I'm going to create a folder and call this the uh, base I'm going to create another folder call it uh, we'll call this one wood we'll create another folder call this one tile and then I'll not give it its own folder because it's going to be a single layer but the first thing I'm going to do is create the emissive layer uh, and I want a I want a fill layer I'm going to choose a fill layer and down here in our fill we can choose everything this is going to have it needs color it does not need height nor roughness nor metallic nor normal all we're going to have is emissive and color so I want this to have a nice yellowy orange glue give it a little warmer a little more orangey something like that it's not too bad maybe brighten a little bit and here in our emissive uh, although it looks black here what this is really showing is how much emission do we want uh, from black to white is 0 to 1 we want to take this all the way well maybe not all the way do we want it all the way yeah I'll put it all the way white and then we'll set that color again just to that nice yellowy orange glow that's not too bad and we have this nice glow effect here um, in your game engine you can control just how powerful that emissive is and I'll show you kind of what I mean there if we go from our paint mode into our render mode and we go to our shader settings and the emissive intensity so right now it's got an emissive intensity of 1 if we were to put that all the way up you can see how much that glows there so it's so bright that it actually overpowers uh, the detail but we're going to put that back down to about one just while we're working on it okay and we'll toggle back to our paint mode so rename this layer just double click and call it emissive now obviously we don't want this over the entire object so we're going to click this little icon add a black mask and that will hide everything and then we're going to pick by polygon so our little picker and by polygon polygon fill and if everything is black we want white which it will default to and we just want to click out those polygons that we want to see being emissive And you can see it's corresponding over here as I click them, they'll change over on the UV map itself. And slightly tedious, but won't take too long because it's a small number of polygons, and there we go. Sometimes it can be a little fiddly with the clicks. There we are. So we will next work on, we'll work on the base because the base is quite simple. 
uh, we'll come down to your base folder and we will add a new fill there actually no we're not going to do that we'll just go straight to our materials here and we'll type in uh, I don't think we have anything for stone but if we try just concrete uh, we have a few different ones here concrete bare uh, mortar wall might look nice yeah this one looks quite good we'll throw mortar wall on here um, not quite what I want actually so we will delete that one uh, maybe concrete concrete sandstone not too bad yeah this one's not too bad actually concrete smooth uh, what we'll do is we'll just drag that into our little base folder uh, all I want to do with this one is again add a I'm going to add a mask but I'm going to add it to the, the overall base instead add a black mask and again with a polygon fill we just click and drag over some of these now and don't forget we'll include these couple of polygons at the top here I don't think this is the exact material I used in the little demo one I showed you but it's close enough that will make no difference we will add that and I'm not too sure on the color of that so we'll just go here concrete smooth scroll down and we have a concrete color and because this is a material we can click the the random seed button and you'll see it just changes the grain not make too much of a difference but should you end up with like a really obvious dirty pattern or something we can just click the randomize and we'll just change it a wee bit uh, and we can change the color let me see I want something kind of dark but I want something almost bluish maybe a really dark grey concrete I don't know if that's what I want but we'll leave it as that for now and we can play with it later uh, a few other things we can do there we can uh, play with our cavities but it's not really overriding or or normal map that we already had and want to work with so we'll just leave that as is that's looking not too bad uh, if we look on this side we can see some better there's some better lighting to show you our normal data that's been brought in from the from the zbrush okay um what could we do next on this guy he's got to be planted in the ground let's just add some dirt and grime so on top of a concrete smooth we're going to add a new blank layer and we are going to just paint on some dirt so my uniform color is going to be uh, a nice dirty dark brown or height we'll give it a wee bit of height doesn't need to be too much roughness should be quite high so it's quite dull actually if we turn the roughness down we can make this look like really shiny wet mud so maybe we'll do that maybe we'll have this lantern be in, uh, in a wet wet grassy field or something and there's wet mud on the base um, if you want it to be dry mud just slide your roughness up up higher you can see there it takes rid of shininess but let's add a bit of shininess to this metallic we don't need normal we'll just leave as is and emissive we can leave it off in fact if you want we can turn off the metallic altogether um because it's the only one we'll not use okay other thing we want to do we want to change the alpha for this brush so we don't want a solid round brush we want to change this to something looking more like dirt and grunge now I don't think I've ever covered making our own brushes in this and we will do that someday but just to get through this quickly uh, if I hold control and scroll I can set my little mouse wheel here and just very very quickly I'm going to add in some of these splatters just 
just to give us a little bit of grime and stuff. And we'll change that alpha to something a little something else just so it's not very repetitive looking. Uh, this one, smudge radio, that looks not too bad. Bit. And it looks a bit too much of a light brown here, so I might uh, I might darken down that color just a little bit. And don't forget as well, now I'm just doing this very, very quickly, but you can uh, rotate, we can put our angle jitter up, and that way every time that we click it, it will come in at a different angle. And that can be handy, add in a little bit of randomness, just so it doesn't look like the same thing over and over again. Uh, that's okay, colour's a little bit off, but we could paint over that. Uh, I'll just sort of darken and desaturate it a bit there. And then it looks a bit better. And you can see there again, we get that nice kind of thick mud look. That looks quite nice. I'm just painting on some of the blackness there. There we go. Now let's move on to our pole here in the middle. And we're going to colour all of this lantern uh, a nice sort of red painted colour on top of the on top of the wood. So we're going to do this in two parts. First of all, we are gonna to go to our wood folder. Uh, let me see materials, wood. What do we have? wood american cherry wood walnut uh, i think wood walnut works quite well on this one but if we drag it on we can see we've got a bit of a problem here in that the grain is kind of going horizontally and it all looks a little bit horrible so let me see we'll drag this down first of all into our wood layer and what I'll do is I will just mark off where I want that to appear. So this time I'm going to add a white mask. I think it'll be easier to remove bits rather than add bits. So I've got a white mask and I'm going to do my polygon fill and just drag and remove all of these polygons that I don't want to have that wood on them. Make sure I've got the bottom there. And then it's just the tiles at the top. And just be careful when you're we're click dragging like that, you can end up selecting uh, stuff behind that you don't want to select. So on these wee fiddly areas, you might need to just go in and individually click them. Which again can be tedious, but we're just kind of stuck on there. See if we can get as much as we can just with a single click drag. Okay, I think that'll do. That's everything we want and everything we don't want. Yep, that's good. So now we just want to fix that uh, direction of the grain. Now actually, as I look at it, if you really, really wanted to uh, do this properly, we do have some horizontal bits of wood. We do have some vertical bits of wood. We could duplicate this wood layer and mask it individually. 
Um, actually, let, let me show you what we're going to do first of all. We're going to take this wood walnut layer. And uh, in the wood walnut, because it is a premium material, it has a lot of extra settings. We have this UV transformation. And we have this option called rotation here. Now, if you watch what happens when I move the rotation, you'll see it kind of rotates around. And we want to change this to 90, and that way we will get a nice vertical. Nice vertical grain, which looks very, very nice down here on the uh, pillar. But once we get up to some areas like this, uh, this wee horizontal beam, doesn't work quite as well. So what you might want to do is take a bit more time here, especially. Uh, you can see we've got the horizontal kind of stripes from ZBrush, but then we've got the vertical grain doesn't really tie in too well. So what we could do is duplicate this uh, and mask out certain sections. Again, use your black mask or white mask and have just this. Uh, reset the rotation to 90 on one layer and have the have say some vertical grain on parts and horizontal grain on parts and mask them out so they're not uh, overlapping each other um, but i'm not going to do that right now i want to get through this quite quickly so i'm just going to leave that for now wood walnut there's our wood layer next thing i'm going to do is just add another fill layer just a plain fill layer and this is going to be our uh, red paint so height yeah, we'll leave a bit of height, we'll leave a bit of roughness. We'll leave all of these, we'll just turn off the emission and we'll turn off the metallic because we don't need metallic. Uh, we're going to turn this into a nice red color, that dark red. That'll, oh, that looks quite nice actually, just that one I've landed on. Let me just check, we're still recording. Yes, we are. Uh, and what we want to do is kind of chip away some of this paint so that it is looks a wee bit worn and a bit battered. It's been out in the elements. So what we're going to do is we're going to add, do I want to add the generator straight away? Everywhere. No, I don't want to add that right onto that. I want to actually add a, we'll add a black mask on here. Uh, to hide the paint and now on this mask we're going to add a generator so we just click on this little magic wand add generator and the generator is like a procedurally generated um bits of grunge bits of roughness and we have a couple of really nice ones we've got dirt and we also have a really nice one called metal edge wear and if we click that you can see what happens now uh, we've got bits of red paint flecking through and the wood shining up underneath so what we need to do is just play with this a little bit and we're going to turn the wear level i think way down way up actually way down uh the way this is going what i want to do is i actually want to invert this what it's doing is it's leaving the corners and getting rid of the faces i want to do the opposite i want the faces to be nice but i want the corners to look like they've taken a few dents over the years so we invert and we can see that's a much better result already uh, our wear level, we'll pull that down a wee bit. We only want these sort of over these edges and things. Just a little bit. Maybe give it a little bit more just for a bit of flavour. Uh, grunge amount, we can turn this up maybe slightly. Grunge scale, we can play with that. And again, the grunge scale, it'll just give you a slightly different result. Um, that's all good. But what I want to do with the main layer itself, I want to go back to the main layer, and if I just zoom in here, I'm just going to give it just the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest amount of height. Now we're talking very, very tiny. If we go too big, it'll it'll look a bit fake. We just want the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest amount. We're talking literally minuscule, just to make it look like that paint has some thickness to it. And the paint scraped away and the wood's being left underneath. I think even that's a bit too much. 0 0.03, we'll change that to 0 0.01. Uh, maybe 0 0.02. Yeah, that's not too bad there. 
And I do advise you put a bit more time into this. Um, play about maybe with some of those horizontal sections and things. Get them looking all nice. That's looking not too bad there. I'm okay with that. Uh, and again, we can do the same thing. We can add. Uh, we can be here. We can add another. We can add another dirt layer. Um, let me show you another way that we can add a dirt layer. Previously, we just added a plain layer. What we'll do this time is we'll add a fill layer, uh, and we'll call this one dirt, and we'll change the color to that uh, really dark brown again. Uh, height, we'll add a little bit of height to it. Roughness, um, we'll not make this the really rough wetness, we'll make this one quite dull. Metallic, we don't need. Uh, a massive, we don't need. But now what we'll do is we will add a black mask to this. And with that black mask, we can just take our paintbrush tool and start painting on the mask. So again, we're going to change our alpha. And we're, we're effectively going to get the same result, but just doing it slightly differently. So I'm going to use that same uh, splatter drops, the cliched splatter drops that I use a lot. And there we're adding that dirt on there. So height, probably a bit too thick. We'll go back here. Put our height down to a tiny, tiny, tiny amount. Roughness. We can change the roughness. Get that shiny, wet, glossy, muck look if you want. But we'll keep it nice and dull. And again, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. But it is worth playing about with your different brushes. Uh, back into your mask here, playing about with your different brushes and seeing what you can come up with. So I just want to add a little bit of dirt there to that. Now the last wee thing we want to do is we want to look at uh, this little metal bracket. Now unfortunately I made the mistake of only modeling this on the high poly and not on the low poly which means we can't use our little quick selection poly tool here. So we're going to have to just paint these in but there are a couple of wee things we can do. Uh, I'm going to start a new, uh, we'll just do a new blank layer, and we'll call this Gold Trim. And effectively what we should do as well is we should paint out the paint from the mask here, but we'll not worry about it, we'll just go quickly. Uh, on our Gold Trim, I'm going to set my brush back to, uh, let me see my circle. Where is my circle? Why is a circle brush not called a circle? Oops. I need my hard circle brush. Where is it? Shape circle squeeze. That'll do. Um, I'll just put the squeeze down on this. Get it back to circular again. Uh, Hardness is up high, so we've got a nice sharp circle brush here. I'm going to set my color on this to a nice kind of goldy, nice bright golden color. And we can play with the color later on. Uh, let me see, how's that look? That's maybe a bit too bright. We'll give it a bit more of an orangey kind of tinge. Darken it down just a wee bit. Uh, not perfect, but you get the idea. And uh, we will turn uh, height. We'll turn it down a wee bit. Again, we never want too much height. Roughness. We want this one to be uh, quite low because it'd be quite shiny. And metallic. We do want metallic on this because it's a metal object. I'm going to turn that metallic up quite high. I paint that on. That's quite nice. We've got a nice metallic sheen off that. Okay, so I'm going to control and mouse wheel to make this smaller. And here's a good little trick for you. You don't want to be painting this, especially if you're moving a, using a mouse, because you're never going to get a straight line. Uh, we want this to be nice and sharp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click once. I'm going to hold the shift key, and you see this little dotted line. And click again. I'm going to move around. I'm going to click once at my starting point. Hold the shift key. Click around. Click once at my start point, hold shift, rotate round a better view. 
and just follow that all the way around. That'll get us some nice straight lines so that we can get this looking like a nice uh, well machined bracket here. How many sides does this thing have? So again, maybe the colour is not perfect in this. Whoops. But just as an indicator, I will show you what to do. Again, I advise you take more time uh, when doing this. As always, I rush through these tutorials so you're not watching too long. Uh, for this bottom bit here, a little bit different. Um, we can now with that edge filled in, we can just sort of paint all across. Fill that up nicely. And go all the way around. Uh, with these little holes here, what we want to do is we want to take our eraser tool and again with a solid round brush uh, I'll put my hardness up on that just so it's nice and hard uh, control and mouse wheel just make that the size I want oh there we're saving we're doing an auto save uh, we'll just hit the eraser tool and that'll get rid of that from where we want it lovely job and just on that, I'm just going to save my file so it doesn't crash. Remember, 10 minute save rule. I'm not very good at it, but hopefully you'll be better. Uh, we'll call this one Lantern 2. Uh, but now these little edges down here, how do we get with our circle brush these nice sharp edges? If I try and paint down here, even when we make it really small, it can be quite hard to get this quite accurate and quite nice without being very fiddly. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make it a little bit bigger. We're going to click up here, we're going to come down beyond the limits where we need and hold shift. Do that. We're going to do the same on the opposite side. Hold shift and bring it down. And that's just a little bit over there. Let me see. Hold shift and bring it down. And even if that's a little bit over, that's okay. It's much easier to go in with the eraser tool now and just tighten up that edge rather than try and get it right the first time. In that tight wee narrow corner. So I'll show you that again. And don't forget, I'll just fill in this little bit here. We're going to look at one side, go up the top, click once, hold shift to get that dotted line. Bring it all the way down, uh, just going over a little bit. Same thing up here, hold shift, bring it down. Uh, we might not even need to go over this time. There we go. And uh, we'll just erase the excess, even we'll make this brush a little bit smaller if you want to be a bit more precise with it. And just continue that on. Now, a combination of the high poly data from the ZBrush and the height setting here means it makes this look like it's got a nice thickness to it. You can see there if we zoom out, it's got the shadows and the shading and stuff, and we get the, the wee rim of light. That will make it look like it's actual geometry as opposed to just being painted on there. Okay, so I'm going to leave that. That's all I really want to do there. Again, we can add our dirt to it. Um, just finish it, polish it off, and tidy it up, etc. Finish filling in all these wee gaps, filling a wee gap up the top here. Uh, but what I want to move on to now is the tile on top and this one again we're not going to do anything too fancy we'll come up we'll close our wee wood folder here come up to our tile folder uh, let me see what do we have we might go stone again uh, we don't have stone we had concrete didn't we uh, this time I'm going to use a concrete clean and apply it on here And what I will do is I'm going to change the concrete color to kind of a navy. Slate is always this kind of nice uh, grayish navy color. That looks quite good actually, even just like that. And again, same thing. Just add your black mask to hide everything. Uh, the only real difference between black mask and white mask is save yourself a bit of time. If I only want it to be on a couple of polygons, it's better to hide it all and reveal a couple of polygons. If it's going to be like the wood and it's on most things, it's better to reveal it on everything with a, with a white mask. And then remove the polygons you don't need. 
So it's really just uh, as you get more experience with it, you, you'll know which one you want. And we'll just click that there, being careful not to add anything that we don't want. But even if we do add something we don't want, it's not the end of the world. If, for example, I click here and whoops, I've added that. Um, we can just go from white all the way down to black, click again and bring that back. Now, we're working from 0 to 1, but you can go entirely 50-50 in here. We can put that in the middle, and if we fill that in, you can see we've kind of got half and half. The two materials blend together. So we're doing very simple stuff at the minute. We don't need that, but as you do more complex stuff, figures and that, we can blend layers together. So, okay, let me just, uh, whoops, wrong side. Uh, black, no, I want white because I'm adding stuff to this. But not all the way down there. And chances are, when you're clicking and dragging like this, you are going to add something that you don't intend to. But... Uh, you can see, in fact, I've already done it. I've added this. But again, just go the opposite direction. If we're on white, go black. And just click that out. Click this one out. And back to white again. Add in these couple of polygons. And there, that's looking pretty good. Same thing. We could go in and add a bit of dirt and grime to this. If we had, say, this is out in a forest, make a little trails of moss and mud in between here. If you ever look at your own roof tiles, there's always wee bits of moss and things. Could be a bit of bird poop. Could be sort of a dirt just from the rain going down. Uh, let's see, actually. We'll go... Um, concrete clean. We'll just, this, uh, we'll just drag it back into our tile folder. And what we'll do is, we're going to add a new plain layer. Uh, add a new layer. And I'm going to take, there's actually quite a nice little alpha here. If I can find it, we're in our brush. Some of these, uh, where are they? If I can find them, that is. They should look like, kind of like streaks. I can't remember the name of them. I'm just going to try and see if I can find them here. you think I would have prepared this, but no. Everything is off the cuff as usual. Maybe there's not. I could have sworn I saw them earlier on. Little streak brushes. Oh, there we are. Drips. Okay. So this one, uh, hardness. We'll turn the hardness up a wee bit. I don't want any angle jitter in this. I always want it to be appearing vertically down the way. And we will control and roll and turn this up. Now, when we get these kind of weird stencil brushes, you want to kind of align yourself to be facing as straight on as you can. And that's the best way to do it. And you can see what we're going to do. I'm going to change the color in this to a very pale kind of whitish kind of color. And a little bit of height on it. Roughness we'll put. Uh, we don't want any metallic. We'll make it quite rough. And size, flow, angle. Okay, that's all okay. Maybe turn the opacity down a little bit so it's not 100% white. Turn their size up a little bit. And if we just add something like that. Maybe another one here. Just adds that little bit of uh, dirt and grain there. I think that's a little bit heavy handed. So I'll actually turn my opacity down a bit as well. Line myself up. There we go, that's not too bad. Do the same on the other side. Maybe make it a little bit smaller. Just to fit in there. That's not too bad. I could add a little bit of a uh, 
general smudgy brush what we would do is just make this very very small and just add in a couple of wee smudges here again I am going very very fast and loose with this please take a bit more time with it but just to get that kind of uh, dirty grotty vibe there just add a couple of wee then like so There we go. Um, plenty more we could add. We could add more dirt and stuff on here. As I say, we can add a little bit of moss and stuff to the roof. Um, but I think I'm going to leave this one here. Uh, what I'll actually do is... Uh, no, do you know what? I'm not, I've covered everything that I want to cover. Uh, there's a few bits unfinished, as you can see. The metal's not quite finished yet, etc. But those are the real techniques that I want you to know. Um, and that's not looking too bad. Spend a little bit more time on it. Maybe tidy up some of that dirt at the bottom. It's a bit heavy handed. Uh, we could adapt the colour there. Make it a bit more uh, uniform. But all in all, I quite like how that's turned out. If we go back just once more to our render mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my uh, let me see display settings, my environment map. I'm going to change this. There's a nice sort of a cave entrance one. And if we rotate round, we can see there that's quite quite nice. And if we turn the environment exposure down, make it more of a nighttime scene. And you can see there that our emissive map or little bit here in the middle is glowing and we go to your shader settings and turn up our emissive intensity and we can make that glow even brighter and you can see how it's even sort of brightening up parts of the lantern itself the wee side edges so that's looking quite nice and that sort of gives you an idea how it'll look in game if you're in a dark environment this will still glow and cast light onto the other areas so let's come back here what we want to do now is actually export this out Oh, what I need to do is, uh, bear in mind that what you do in your render mode carries back over. So we're going to turn that emissive back down. Go to our display settings. I'm not spending too long here explaining what's going on here, but if you just follow where my mouse is, display settings, uh, environment exposure. Bring that back up to about 1. There we go. And again, uh, I'll rotate around to the side that we can see uh, most of that gold. And just with a shift and right click, we can rotate or light around to see how it's affected by the environment around it. So this is actually casting that sort of green leafy uh, forest light onto it. You can see there's a wee hint of the green light and then white skylight and stuff. Um, yeah, okay, we'll just export this now. Let's presume it's finished. And we'll just export now. How are we for time? We're up to God, 43 minutes already. Uh, okay, so exporting. We just want to go file. Uh, first of all, we'll file and save. And then we'll go file, export textures. And we've got default material. Uh, reason why that's called default material is because we didn't change our material name in 3D Studio Max way back in part one. But if you change your material name, you get whatever you want. Uh, so export, click this box to show where you want it to actually go, and just save wherever. Uh, let me see, Japanese Lantern, I will save in there. Nope, that's not where I want it to go at all. Come on, Japanese Lantern. Select that folder. Uh, PBR Metallic Rough, confirm padding, that's all okay. Uh, PNG, we can use your different file types, but PNG is usually a good one to go for. Uh, the size of the documents we want to put out, uh, we initially set up as 2048. We'll keep that as 2048. And here's the different uh, textures that we're going to get. Base color, roughness, metallic, normal, height, and or emissive map. So that's all good. All we have to do is click export. And that's going to fly through those 
and save them out ready for us to tech into Unreal. Now fortunately Unreal does not like to run very well on my laptop when I am recording video so I can't really show you that but if we go back to our uh, let me see Japanese Lantern there we can see our texture files so there is my base color if this opens up and that's all our reds and uh, oranges and things that'll be our emissive and you can see only the the parts of the lantern are now emissive uh, height map there's not really much going on in the height you can just see some slight variation there metallic we've only got a wee bit of metal uh, our normal map you can see there's a lot of stuff going on there and the majority of that will have been carried over from our sub uh, or zbrush we we're doing the high poly version of that uh, the roughness map again the brighter it is the rougher it is is that right or vice versa uh, so you can see which parts are kind of shiny and reflective and which aren't so those are all our texture files we just drag those into either unity or unreal or whatever game engine you have and uh yeah that's us that's another project uh more or less complete uh, as i say we could have spent more time on it if you were to do this yourself what i would recommend is maybe duplicate that wood material and rotate it for where it looks like we should have horizontal planks of wood instead of vertical uh we'll finish off our little metal guy uh play with our dirt a little bit more uh, maybe just play with some other materials for your concrete and get it looking how you want it. It doesn't need to be concrete. It can be sandstone. It can be whatever. Um, and yeah, just spend a little bit of time on your, your dirt and your grime there. But uh, I think that looks not too bad. With a little bit more time and effort, we could tidy that up and make it look quite nice. Uh, I'll maybe do that and show you a finished version in a little intro video for this series. But um, yeah, that's pretty good. So I think that was about... Uh, three hours three and a half hours all together to make this prop um probably could do it a little bit quicker if i wasn't talking over it but also need to spend a little bit more time on it just to get it uh finished and polished up so you're looking what maybe four or five hours gets you that nice prop uh completely made and that's not too bad okay thank you very much for watching guys if you have any questions or comments or if you have any suggestions for uh improvements you can make on that please feel free to leave them below uh, if you like the videos, please check out my other tutorials. There's some of them are less complex. Um, coming down the line, there should be some that are more complex than this and probably take twice as long. Maybe you'll not want to do that at all. Um, and yeah, like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. And uh, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you next time.